at Wolf Camp and the Conservation College uh, Blue Sky Farm in Puyallup, Washington. We are broadcasting every day at 6 p.m. Um, all the way up till through today. It is Earth Day 2020 and of course we're doing this because in honor of the physical distancing era that we're going through. But today is a special day because we're celebrating along the Puyallup River Walk which is part of the Foothills Trail that has been envisioned for a generation or more uh, to go all the way from Tacoma to Tahoma, or Tahoma to Tacoma, which is Mount Rainier, all the way down to the Salish Sea at the city of Puyall, at the city of Tacoma. And it isn't fully done yet, but it's getting close. And so it's very exciting because what we're doing today is um, going on a, li a very um, special part of uh, actually anywhere along the Puyallup Riverwalk is great and we're also celebrating the first annual of course it was canceled in person but there's still a virtual first annual all along the Riverwalk uh, event that hopefully will become an annual event here in May along the Puyallup Riverwalk beautiful trail as you see we're on a little side trail right now uh, but we're just going to look at a couple of the native plants and listen to the birds and then go out to the big wide uh, Puyallup River Walk. And um, we're really excited because we think this spot is perfect for a elementary school or a junior high biology teacher or something to adopt because, well, we'll show you why. For instance, I mean, there are so many native and invasive species. There's a lot of restoration work that can be done perfect place to teach students between the native, non-native species, all the wild edible medicinal plant uses. Kim, Lily is pull, Kim's pulling. <laughs> Lily is pulling. Come on back, Lily. Can I introduce you? This is Lily, our half border collie, half blue tick coon hound. Camp dog. Um, yeah, camera dog. And um, we have special permission to be down here uh, today to film in honor of all on the river walk. Look at this right here. I mean, this is a beautiful wetland plant. We're kind of down in a low area. This is almost down to river level, but on the other side of the dike, this is hardhack or spirea. Perfect plant. We've got, I mean, back here, uh, we're gonna see these from a distance as well. I mean, can you identify, this is one of the most readily um, identifiable classic leaves, the cottonwood that is along all the rivers. We'll see they grow giant and fast. Let's keep on going. Can you handle those? Come on up. You have to closer. make sure that this one's on you. Oh yeah, it's on. Oh. oh, this is beautiful. Take a look at this flowering, red flowering current. Now the currants um, and the, are in the, uh, it's called the Ribes genus, R-I-B-E-S. And it is a gooseberries are also Ribes or currants. This one, um, people don't really harvest much for food. No. But uh, man, it's gorgeous. It's wonderful Quite, for the pollinators. Oh, the hummingbirds, yes. the butterflies, everybody, the bees obviously need these. And so um, it has a really distinct leaf, but it's not, well, yeah, look at that shape. Beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. Gonna get a little bit bigger. There's even big ones, stink currants. Native stink currants are really big. Little uh, gooseberries with the thorns are delectable. If you find any of those, uh, don't tell anybody where they are because they're really gorgeous. Lily really wants to go in over there for some reason. Check Probably a critter. Out. Let's keep on going. Oh, look what we have right here. Got um, our native Douglas fir, which you can tell it's got these nice little red buds. Come on up a little closer. Um, we've got needles going all the way around. Of course, it's fur, so it's nice and soft. And uh, these are about the highest source of vitamin C you can get today if you didn't uh, save your berries from last year. Mm. You just suck those or put those into your uh, water bottle, and yeah. it leaches vitamin C into your water. If only people had known before 1850 what caused scurvy, they wouldn't have to have worried about that. Now you have to be careful of poisonous lookalikes. Make sure it's not a Pacific yew or some other uh, that, uh, tree that's not in the pine family. So, but yous don't have those pointy red buds, so that's pretty mm -hmm, easy to tell the difference mm -hmm. between duck mm, fur and a Pacific so cube. good. Oh, they are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's keep on going. Okay. Let's head up to the big wide river. Like Lily is really sniffing something. <laughs> to check out. Now, there are a lot of invasive species uh -oh. like the Himalaya blackberry right here. Of course, two months out of the year, we love them. The rest of the year, because <laughs> of these thorns, not so much. But um, the young leaves and the flowers of any of the edible berries which 
for instance, blackberries and raspberries, all the different species of that that we have native and non-native are all edible and easy to identify because they are aggregate. Aggregate or, berries, so they've got all the little mm -hmm. balls on them. Y'all know what blackberries and raspberries look like. Now, uh, blackberry leaf is also renowned for... It's an astringent, astringent. or drying mm -hmm. plant, so if you have... Um, diarrhea or something like that, it's not going to cure what yeah. causes it, but it'll help dry you out a little bit, which mm. is kind of what I would be looking for if I had diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, yeah. look so you want to make yourself a, a, a um, infusion out of it if you can, That's like a true. hot infusion, like a tea. Look at all of this invasive Japanese knotweed that's in here. It does take over and the problem with some invasives are worse than others. Himalaya blackberry, Japanese knotweed, they take over and obliterate out all of the native plants. And so this area is perfect for restoration because there's a mix of native plants and these invasives that need to be worked on and taken out. And take a look over here, a panorama over this direction. Another perfect location for like a student group because you can, teachers can really keep track of all the kids. They can run around for break. Um, they're along the river. You can't really um, get down to the river, so it's pretty safe. And look at these giant cottonwoods lining all around the um, the river. I mean, it's just, that's what grows along rivers. It's wonderful. Hey, let's go in here because I know when we were here before, there were some great native plants. Here's some more Douglas fir. When they're small, um, it's hard to tell identify trees because a lot of the barks look the same. I mean, if you just look a little picture of this, it would look like cherry bark or something, or maybe a Pacific silver fir, which grows in higher elevations. These lower, uh, these younger trees, hard to identify by the bark. Look at the difference between, like right here. I mean, there is a native hazelnut, beaked hazelnut coming, growing right next to a Japanese knotweed. I mean, these knot we need to be taken out so that the native hazelnut can grow, these beaked hazelnuts. And by the way, this right here, as we've mm -hmm. mentioned in previous broadcasts, is your number two best leaf for number two. Of course, toilet paper is such a hot commodity right now. <laughs> and so these leaves get medium size, a little bit bigger than this, oh, but the way that you identify that right them. There. That's a nice big oh, one. Oh yeah, down there, that's fine. The way I identify them is they kind of, well, you just feel them. There's nothing else as soft that grows on a big, tall shrub, and, and this is just small, of and course. And their margins are really um, serrate. I think they're called a double-toothed margin because they're really kind of yeah. jagged on the edges, and it looks a lot like a red alder so leaf. So soft. Yeah, it does when it mm -hmm. gets big. Um, by the way, Kimmer, <clears throat> I probably shouldn't talk quite so loud because we do want to listen to the birds. So if oh, you do okay. listen to some songs that are close enough for her to pick up in the camera. Mm -hmm. The um, all along the Riverwalk organization that's putting together the uh, big event in May, they have, um, they would like us to focus on some wildlife and birds and such because the Pierce Conservation District is um, also gonna do a video about native plants. And so, um, for instance, here is the, uh, I think this schedule might change, but all along the Riverwalk, Tuesday, um, is hopefully May 5th. They're thinking about, I know we've got some nice singing starting up. From, oh, robins are going, song sparrows. Um, but you can only hear a little bit of it, so let's, hopefully we'll get closer. Uh, hopefully May 5th, the uh, outdoor recreation will open up and they'll be able to open up the river walk. We'll see, of course, that'll have to follow the science on that. Uh, Thursday, Conservation District and uh, Wolf Camp videos might go online for their virtual event. Um, and there's also a art contest one of the days and uh, was gonna be a trail run. I think they're gonna do a virtual trail run. Uh, <laughs> so, Kim, are you just having something that you wanna mention or are you good? Oh, no, I didn't okay. know if we wanted to head that yeah, way yeah, really fast and check out a few more over here we before noticed. we head toward the river. Yeah. The birds are starting to sing though. Oh, mm -hmm. listen to that, you can hear a little bit. Let's listen, because it, oh, there's a toey. Yeah, there's a toey. That's just a little bit of the song sparrow, I think, probably portion, no? What are you thinking? No, no, that's a toey going yeah. But that part, pew, pew, pew. Okay, well anyways. Oh, there's a song sparrow right there. Exactly. Toey. Yeah. Robin. Robin's calling back there. <laughs> okay, well anyway, I want to talk about this well, particular tree right well, here. Well, let's, let's hang on one second because oh. we do have some singing, so let's... Okay, see, did you hear that? That's the Toei's song. Kind of sounds like an old... No, that's not. 
<clears throat> All right. Uh, that part right there going, choop, choop, choop. what are you thinking, Kimmer? Oh, I think it's just a little portion of the song sparrow that we can't hear the rest of. But Kim's shaking her head. <laughs> I have to get a little closer to tell. All right. Well, anyways, um, Kim wanted to point out this, but there's one that has a little more leaves out over here. But it doesn't really matter because it has green bark. Now, there aren't really, when it's young, we've got big leaf maples that have green bark, but this is green even when it gets old. And Kimmer, do you want to talk about it or should I? Um, you can, but I was thinking you could fan out that one leaf that's about your okay. hand height so everyone can see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I looked at that earlier. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah. It's now it's going to get about, what, two times that size mm -hmm. or so? But that is our native, one of these. Uh, around this area the trees and the shrubs are amazing it's just the bottom story of the plants around here are getting um, hammered by some invasive species that we see but this is a fine maple it is so critical in the pacific northwest oh, now speaking great. of young trees check well, there's some babies this down there. out right here that. now this is a rare tree uh very few places that i found it and it used to be way over harvested because it was in fact can I tell a story about it? Yeah. yeah, so my uncles, when they were little kids, um, they used to earn, and I don't recall how much it was, but they used to go out and harvest the bark of this tree and bring it back into town and sell it um, because it is used, or was used primarily as a laxative. Mm -hmm. And, they and have the to translation of this into English oh. is called sacred bark. Sacred bark, yeah. Yes, uh, cascara sagrada, or cascara sagrada. Uh, Latin and Spanish sacred bark because yeah for history it's been renowned as a laxative which of course was considered a cure-all for a lot of things and of course if you have you know a little constipation I mean you want it anyway right but you're not gonna go out and gnaw on the tree because the no. bark has to dry and I think it, it there's the protocol is like give it a year to dry before you process it for something like that but it's an I've not done it story <laughs> plant and notice that like this one's a little broken but it's this classic how it grows kind of is droopy in the understory it stays lower than all of the um the um uh alders although when you look at it from a distance it kind of looks like an alder but it's not serrated on the edges um and it's a little bit more well it is has a little bit of waviness yeah you, and you want to notice the veins the yeah. venation all right let's listen to the birds real quick they're still singing oh the robin's doing an alarm over that direction i wonder yeah. if somebody's coming down the trail and they're not supposed to <laughs> All right, let's keep on going. Let's head on out to this wider area of the Puyallup River Walk, which is a gorgeous, I don't know, what, three, at least maybe four mile stretch of the Pierce County uh, trail system called uh, the Foothills Trail that goes from Tacoma to Tacoma. Um, not fully finished yet, but almost realized there's a portion of the uh, river between Puyallup and Tacoma, only maybe another three miles or two or three miles that needs to be finished. Uh, before it's pretty much connected mountain to sea. It's going to be an amazing thing. And then once that's done, that connection is done, oh my goodness, there's going to be so much great opportunity for restoration work. And again, this would be a perfect location. We were uh, given permission to be out here to film today in preparation for the All on the River Walk this year virtual event. Hopefully uh, a annual event starting every May in Puyallup. I'm just going to scan down both directions. Yeah. There's one way. Look how beautiful it is. This is going to be a perfect trail um, when they open it back up for social distancing because it is about eight feet wide and so people can stay on either side of the trail, pass one another safely. <laughs> Amanda wants to know if we ever thought we'd, when we started we'd be doing 38 days. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, unfortunately, yeah. I actually... <laughs> Darn, we actually kind of yeah. figured, yeah. <laughs> kind of keeps me going. Like, you know, I was sitting around for the first few days of the old quarantine, I'm going, oh, okay, I need something to motivate myself. Um, yeah, so we're underneath these giant cottonwoods now. Ooh. Yeah, take a look at that. Just oh, the, it is I the tree it. of the western rivers. Even in dry areas on the other side of mountains, oh. Rocky Mountains, these cottonwoods, are classic they get giant and beautiful mm -hmm. you're at 20 percent, so i should plug you in okay sure and um let's uh set up on uh, in front of oh wow look at this hazelnut here that's growing oh, yeah it's interesting the ones in the shade were much bigger yeah and uh it's this one is looking good again this whole area 
is there's a competition along the lower areas that needs to be a bunch of restoration work done. Um, but except for right here, look at this. Oh yeah, these look are at these. beautiful. Look at this native plant that I'm gonna is, get it close. Uh, has outcompeted the blackberries that haven't taken over here. The Himalaya blackberries haven't taken over. The ivy that's growing up the trunks of these trees off in the distance, you see that? That all needs here, to be cut. Here, you get cut. your finger back in it, I'll aim with it. How's that? Okay, I got it on <laughs> yours. I don't know where yeah, it's Yeah, it's all along down in this stretch. Kind of, this is a wild area of the Puyallup River Walk. Some of the river walk does go through near downtown and uh, near some of the beautiful downtown neighborhoods of Puyallup. And I uh, hear you if you want to plug this in. But this section is just incredible that goes uh, kind of on the eastern uh, side of downtown where we are right now. And then, of course, if you go further out in the county, it turns into officially called the Foothills Trail. And um, going all the way out to Tacoma, it's wonderful. Here, if you hey. want to hold this, I'll uh -huh. take that. Sure. Over here, uh, this is interesting because the, when was the flood? When were the floods this winter on the Puyallup River? I cannot remember. Was it December? can't remember when the floods kind of came in this year. It hasn't flooded for a couple of months at least, but look at all this mud that was deposited. We're way up from the river. The probably, this has got to be at least 15 feet higher uh, than the actual oh, yeah. river right now. And um, meaning that this was all flooded and all this mud was deposited. And you were down here a few minutes ago, right, Kimmer? I was. And you mentioned something that you yeah. found. So I'll have you head over that direction and take a look. Uh, because these kind of muddy areas are perfect location to start studying what kind of wildlife is coming through the area. Now down along the rivers, of course. Woo. Watch out, Lily. Oh, Lily. Okay, Lily so can smell it's this. It's gonna be really hard for people on camera to see unless we get close. Oh, I'll bring it close. Knows, she I'll loves bring things close. Like this. But right here, there's a really nice track. It's an animal that has two toes, and it looks like it stepped on its own track, right? right there and then it's next footprint that I see easily is right here and so you can see these beautiful two toes right there and it just continues all the way across this nice little muddy area so um, does anyone know who that is an animal <laughs> with two toes yep. <laughs> two hooves we're starting a little easier than uh, was two weeks ago when we were out way out on the Puyallup River an open area oh, yeah. This is that a we well know traveled of. area. There's a bunch of tracks that are going this way, back and forth. So definitely really cool to think about them all moving through here. Hey Kimber, I think we have a towie that's really singing loud right now. Hang on. Every eight seconds or so. Come on, sing again, Toey. Nope. Song Sparrow. Song Sparrow is going again. Sort of sounds like tweet, tweet. Yep. And of course they are singing all the time right now, aren't they? Because they have to defend their territories while when all these are year-round birds that are really fiercely competing for territory right now, uh, nesting and having their eggs, and uh, right now, you want to grab Lily or here? No, I'll grab Lily. Yeah, you grab Lily. <laughs> okay, Lily, don't go anywhere. Don't chase You're the illegal deer. right now, Lily, because you have let go of the Okay, leash. there you go. All right. Listen to the robin singing. The robin's song and voices are. I hope everybody can hear that. Can you hear it? I can um, hear it. Are the robin song and voices? Is the first bird that you need to learn because <laughs> that's it's marking its territory. That's how these songbirds mark their territories, and um, and if they switch from a song to like a. <laughs> sort of a sound <laughs> which we'll probably hear sometime we'll try to stop and hear that that means like a person's coming by or a bear is coming by or something like that and what are you trying to touch the camera I'm with waving your nose? at people <laughs> you're waving with your nose <laughs> yeah. um, anyways um, and then if it switches to like a pew, pew, that means there's more danger like there's an actual you know a bobcat or a cat or something that's going that tends to eat robins or maybe an owl perched in the tree Hopefully we'll we'll uh, get something like that, but it is beautiful to hear. If you hear the robins singing, pretty much all as well, because they watch out for what's going on way up high and down on the ground and mid-level of the canopy. Um, Kim was worried that we're not the getting a very not... good battery on mine. Anyway, so um, yeah.
for it to settle down a little bit. Let's continue walking um, right down here more along the river and see if there's some ducks and other things right along. The river is flowing pretty fast right now because it's been, um, it's been, let's just go. Okay. Uh, it has been raining. All right, let's go. All right, come on, Noah. 10%. Oh, look at these hazelnuts. Oh, they so look so good. And oh, these we didn't guys. Mention what these are. No. These are um, the th <coughs> thinnest um, stems in the forest of the low lying shrubs like this are snowberry. They mm. are just. Uh, now, of course, they're white berries. They are purgative. So right. don't eat they them. They make you throw up. That's what that means. <laughs> purgative. Yeah. Yeah. So, unless you need to do that. <laughs> oh, we're under this beautiful canopy of hazelnut. Oh, oh so gorgeous. Love it. Yep. And um, let's see what else we got along here. Can people see the river flowing so fast? Oh, I don't know. Let me get over this log. Ooh. Now, there are some nice native plants. Look at this um, horsetail. I think there are only two species of horsetail left in North America, and some are male and some are female. And so, with the ones that you have coming up, you wonder, oh, is this horsetail or whatever? And look it up because there's only two species. Really easy to look up on your native, like, Plants of the Pacific Northwest Coast book. Wow. Or botany in the day. The river is moving. Woo. Yeah, let's just let's go on the trail, see what else we've got. Okay. We do have this mix of oh my goodness, look at this camera. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> oh you all are now, so lucky. Yes, this is uh -huh. again the Ribes uh Ribes uh genus, the current the current genus. And look at these tiny little leaves and really thin, incredibly sharp um Thorns. I'm gonna have to look it up. Is that a gooseberry? Oh, it's totally a gooseberry. Sweet. Yeah, no, that would be no. I gooseberry have to be protected because yes. a lot of those patches have been wiped out, and so this whole area, this ivy should be taken out. These gooseberries should be um, supported. And, oh, uh, awesome! Of course, yeah. it's surrounded by a bunch of uh, snowberry and other things. But I mean, look at all of this. Now, this um, ivy, oh. I wouldn't take it out of here probably because it's it is holding, holding the in bank. Some soil. Yeah. Um, you have to do a lot of other Well, there goes an Indian plum. Oh, here's oh, a cherry. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can point out the bark on the cherry. We were looking at yeah. the, the pitch pockets on the Douglas fir, and you mentioned mm -hmm. cherry. And it's because they have these, um, uh, like, sideways horizontal streaks on them called lenticels. Unfortunately, the ivy, English ivy is growing Having up. Having its way. But let's just, can, can they see that pretty well? Right behind you is a uh, Indian plum. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted you to bring down the leaves of the cherry. Oh, okay. Does this look good? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Look at how beautiful these cherry trees are. Um, the native black cherry is these beautiful white flowers growing in the forest. And if we could see way up above, there's still a bunch of flowers on here. Here's some. Oh. The petals right there. Nice. Much and there's a really the active song sparrow behind I us. I know. Yeah, it's just that. And it doesn't care that somebody's coming down the trail. Uh, oh, did you hear the one, two, three introductory notes? Jerry's probably laughing at us. Um, it's Jerry watching. Really yeah. Anyway, so here's a now this all uh, naturalists or anybody in the Pacific Northwest should know this um, plant because it is the harbinger of spring. The Indian plum. The leaves come out first. The flowers start coming out in. February sometimes, but early March for sure. And then, whenever you're in the forest, you're like, oh, what kind of shrub is that? It's growing up, kind of, you know, somewhere between three and I don't know, ten feet tall or whatever, or like not even that, five feet tall. Uh, go, oh, I wonder if it's an Indian plum, because the rest of the winter, the rest of the summer, just kind of looks like a bunch of other things. All right, let's see what else we can find yeah. before we run out of time today. Okay. Watch it is so beautiful right out here. Okay, just let it go so and I will... So much restoration uh, work that can be done along the river with uh, picking up garbage. Do you oh, have yeah. your garbage can? I mean, um, no, I left it over near the trail, oh, so I'll have to go... Oof. Oh, right, I guess you can't handle that and the camera. No, on. no, but I always bring a garbage bag with me anytime I take Lily for a walk or go out any place like this and pick up garbage. And it's something that we can do as a community to support where we live. And it's very easy to do, so please, everyone pick up... <gasps> Husband! What do you got? Oh my goodness, here, hold the camera. Okay. Is it a bird? No. Is it a plant? No. It's oh a my gosh! Check these are out. awesome. Check it out, everybody. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but this I'm going to show Kim's you something super cool. This is favorite plant to show the coolness super of. Super cool. And look at the flowers starting to develop on there, real quick. Really? Oh, yeah. Are there? Oh yeah. yeah. Can you see it in yours? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. So this is the way you tell which plant this is. If you take a leaf 
and you start to very, very gently tear it. Let's see if I can do it with these glasses. I'm sure to see. Very, very gently tear it. Oh, cool. It's magic. I don't know if people can see that real close. Yeah, up there's or not, there's latex in the veins, so this is actually a dogwood. You. Put it's your a... hand right behind it and see if it'll focus on it. Okay, so this is a dogwood, and all of your dogwoods will do this everything down from the big trees like this um, to the red osier and down to the little teeny forest plant called a bunchberry. They will all do this. So if you think you have a dogwood or you have a dogwood in your yard, go out and try it. It's really fun. And do, do you tell them what it is? Latex. Oh, latex yeah. in the veins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you cool. get botany in a day, oh, it's a wonderful, oh, <laughs> pardon me, I'm getting pulled. Um, I don't think that's helping. has a really wonderful essay at the end in the appendix yeah. uh, on the there it is. properties of plants. I'm not climbing down to oh. that. Um, the ash tree. Oh, you have an ash tree in front of there? Right there. Um, here, get the finger right and point in front and I'll try to. I'll point. Uh huh. A little bit more to the right. There, yeah, it's that one right there, um, but it's beautiful, uh, probably Oregon, um, what do they call like it, Oregon ash? mountain ash, yeah, most likely. I think anyway, it but it's great for <laughs> pollinators. Now that the one. bees are starting to come out and honeybees are coming out, once these things all start flowering, excuse me, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Let's oh, look at that river, it's, it's really flowing. It is 630. Now the other beautiful thing about the river walk in um, August and September, full of fisher men and women that are down here catching the salmon on the odd years a lot of pink salmon what's this 2020 yep oh, it's too bad on the social distancing year that it's uh not an odd year there won't be quite as many salmon for everybody but um it's, it's a beautiful fine. thing but to do but something that you really all should pulling. know it's an amazing trail there's so much potential here um it's a very safe place to be i always feel just wonderful being out here and we're hiking on it and um, at all times of the year, you're going to be able to have all the birds coming through. So now we're looking at our, all of our migrant songbirds moving into the area, which is super exciting. And oh, sorry, listen yeah. to more birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, we got to be watching those migrant songbirds now. All right, so we're going to have to sign up pretty soon, but I do want to encourage everybody to check out all along the Riverwalk event in Puyallup. There's a very popular event that unfortunately was canceled on Facebook. You can check that out, that out. But pretty soon they're going to be posting a bunch of incredible videos. Um, yeah, can you grab these? Because Lily is pulling me down to the river. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. There we go. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so all along the river walk, check it out. Um, there's going to be, I think, a whole three or four or five days of videos being put out celebrating the Puyallup River Walk and the beautiful Foothills Trail that was envisioned 20, 30 years ago. Um, by env environmental greats of Puyallup um, who, from the Foothills Rails to Trails Coalition who um, are almost realizing their decades-long vision of connecting Tahoma to Tacoma and Puyallup, the city of Puyallup and other partners have acquired land all along the river and different places to connect the dots so that this incredible gem of Pierce County can finally be realized and it's also going to be connected on the cross-country rails to trails that is being developed over the next course of the next 10 years. Check that out. All right, everybody, get outside for at least 20 minutes a day. Be well. Um, let's help flatten this curve so that by summertime our camps can get going. And in the meantime, turn around and see if you can hear and watch this toey um, singing right there. Perfect. Oh, I see it. It's on the X. It's on the X. There. Just to the left of the X. Uh, there. Sing now, Toby. Sing. Oh. Oh well. We yeah. got to see it fly. See That's it fly. cool. All right, everybody. Be well. We'll see you. T t well, I don't know when we're gonna see you. We're gonna try to um, unveil the Wolf Journey Earth Conservation Course pretty soon, and we'll let you know with posts on Facebook, YouTube, and the Wolf College website where and when and how we're going to be doing that. Bye now. Bye.